everybody um, my objective today is to take you through the oil lubricating oil distribution within a gardener engine take a look at how uh, the pump works how the oil is distributed around the engine and make some recommendations on that front so as you can imagine there has to be an oil pump somewhere and this is a typical gardener oil pump here it is submerged right down in the sump so much so that the whole of that pipe and in fact most of the pump itself um, is submerged in oil oil can quite often come right up over the joint between the sump and the crankcase I hope you've got that so where does it get its drive from well this is the drive shaft here as you can see it's got this gear here at the top and that gear engages in here <clears throat> on the camshaft we'll take a look now at that in more detail but you can see this a bit better now that's where that shaft gets its drive from the camshaft is running along here and there's a gear on it there which engages on this gear and rotates that shaft i hope you've got that and here in the sump the pump develops high pressure in the oil. The oil is pumped up through an internal channel here and emerges into this pipe. Up that pipe, right the way up, 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 until it reaches this valve here. This is a very simple valve. And if the pressure in this pipe is high enough, the valve inside here lifts and the oil can escape into the oil filter here under relatively low pressure. Now, the oil that does, does not escape into the filter instead comes out through this port at the back here. You'll notice here, this pipe here. This pipe is connected rather tortuously down this second pipe here, all along here, and down into the crankshaft. And the oil is distributed through the crankshaft because the crankshaft is hollow, and I will have explained that in a, an earlier video that I done some, some months ago. So, let's consider now where the oil comes out of the oil filter. It's coming out here. Um, it has got uh, the possibility of going through this pipe here, which goes up to the rockers. It lubricates the, lo the rock rockers there under the rocker covers, just there and across here. Now, it's hard to point this out, but it also flows down a pipe here and into uh, a long pipe which flows along the back of the injector pump. And I'll show you that now in a minute. This is the long tube at the back of the injector pump. Now, this is actually an 8LXB, but the 6LXB is the same you'll see that that tube carries through to the front here and from there the oil spills down into the timing case cover as I described from this engine a bit you can see here that is the main sump but if you look very carefully there's another small sump at the front there and the pump has been designed in such a way that it'll suck oil from primarily from the main sump pan here but also from that front sump pan. Explained at the start of the video um, the sumps have different orientations. The first video showed you a conventional rear pan sump. Now this is another <coughs> rear pan sump here and you'll notice that the smaller sump is actually at the back of the engine in this case at the rear of the engine and it's much smaller. That's it there. This is another rear uh, rear pan sump here and if I go forward you'll you'll may be able to make out the scavenger sump there this is a sump of uh, 4LW where the main sump pan is actually in the center of the sump notice that some of the sumps have got full cooling fins on them and others are as you can see are, are quite plain this sump is actually a center pan sump from a 6LXB. These were used a lot on uh, Leyland buses back some years ago. Now, this is an interesting feature here. 
here's a sump that has been damaged possibly this engine has been dropped and it's been repaired here now um, welding these sumps is a real problem because um, a lot of the gardener sumps were made of a material called electron and it's really very difficult to weld but we've got people here that can do it so anybody with a damaged sump we can certainly help them with that sump of a 6LW there's no scavenger um, pan on this one if we go down here you'll see this is the area where that tube on the on the oil pump eh, is located it comes in here and there's a gauze over this um, so that any oil that's passing down through the, the, the uh, from the lubrication system above has to pass through this gauze here and it's lubricated in that way and it's um, filtered in that way these are examples of some of the the gauzes from different gardener engines you'll notice here uh, that's the orifice through which the oil pump tube passes down we'll go now and we'll take a look at how the pump itself works and you'll see that it sucks oil both from that rear sump there and from the front sump which is called the scavenger sump <coughs> how does the pump actually work let's have a look and see to remind you once again that tube is down in the sump in fact the whole body is usually submerged in oil the shaft is rotating this way now and as I, as I described to you the oil comes up through this hole up through the crankcase and up to the valve but what's this port here for what this port here does is this is where um, the pump sucks the oil from the forward scavenger um, pan remember I explained that to you so in actual fact you've actually got two pumps here you've got the main one up here which is sucking the oil up here and pushing it up into the engine in high pressure and you've got a secondary pump at the bottom here which is sucking oil through here from the scavenger pan which means that the main sump pan has been constantly replenished from the scavenger as a lorry is driving down a steep hill or as a boat is pitching about in heavy seas that scavenger um, pan at the front the scavenger sump is going to get some oil so this lower pump section here is just constantly bringing that oil back back into the main sump again i hope that's clear so now i'm going to take the pump apart and i'm going to show you the innards of it i pull the pump apart and what do i see um, very simple rotating gears and that's how it works it's as simple as that those rotating gears simply squeeze the oil up into the up into the engine isn't that so simple and you've got a matching pair at the bottom which are driven from that same shaft i take that plate away you get the idea same thing just little rotated gear wheels very very simple now testing the pump is very very simple I simply get a container of oil pop the tube down in there like that and rotate the shaft anti-clockwise and before very long the oil will start coming up through this hole here I hope you can see that I'm trying to avoid making it creating a mess here uh, but you, you get the idea I can also rotate the shaft clockwise and before very long I'll see uh, bubbles appearing down in the oil uh, oh. again you'll have to believe me on that <laughs> but I know that's a good pump because these gears are running continuously in oil they just don't give any bother at all they don't wear because hopefully if the owner keeps the oil fresh and good um, <clears throat> they're being constantly lubricated they're just they're not they're never run without lubrication at all that would be extraordinary so they're very reliable last a very long time very very simple just before we leave the pump i want to point out that not all gardener oil pumps have this um, this um, 
two-in-one uh, arrangement. Uh, a lot of ALW engines, for example, don't have a scavenger uh, at the front, and they don't have the two sections. They just have one. They're much, they're much, uh, much more a simple design. Essentially, the LK, the four LK engine, is the same basic technology as this. On the um, <clears throat> L3B engines, the oil pump is actually external to the crankcase, but they work the same way. And the oil pump for the oil cooler on the LXB engines, um, it's the same technology as this, but it's only one stage, of course. Here we've got the oil pressure release valve. This is just the body of it. Remember, the oil pump is forcing the oil up here at quite high pressure. Um, and inside here, we've got this valve. That valve simply pops down in there. It's held down there by the pressure of this spring. And then we've got this adjustable cap here that goes in on top of that. Um, now, I won't bore you with refitting the valve. Uh, just bear with me a minute. The valve back in place. I pop in the spring. I pop down this adjustable screw. Give it a few turns to hold it in place. Then this lock nut. And once I have the lock nut on, and down in place, I can then put on this cap. Now the cap is largely, doesn't really have a function other than decoration. The screw doesn't look so pretty coming up there. But, um, on here, I don't know if you can make that out or not, the required oil pressure, the suggested oil pressure, is stamped. On this one here, it's 35 psi. Now, um, on LW engines, it's 45. On 4LK, it's 35. And on LB, L3B, as far as I remember, it's 35 also. The pressure developed here can get actually quite high. Uh, if this valve sticks, I've seen this happen whenever we've been fitting on, refitting a, a, a valve assembly, if the pressure gets high enough, it'll actually burst the pressure gauge. But the, the spring arrangement with the little valve is very simple, it gives no bother at all, and again, because it's constantly lubricated, um, they last a very long time. Here we have an actual pressure gauge fitted to the engine. Perhaps I should have done this earlier in the video. Um, this is a commoner gardener pressure gauge. It's fine for the job. Um, one of the problems with it is that it's calibrated up to 100 psi. Ideally, it'll be better at 60 psi or thereabouts. And the original gardener gauges were um, calibrated up, they had a full scale deflection of 60 psi, which give you a better, more accurate reading. But this one is still fine. Um, here's an example of a rather sad and rather tired example uh, of an original Gardner gauge, you'll see that it's calibrated up to 60 psi. Um, I think it's probably going to be going in the bin. It's just not, not, not salvageable. It's difficult to get the original ga gauges now. Um, there are gauges out there where somebody has um, um, put a transfer or whatever on the fascia here, but they're not, um, they're not the original ones. Although they're fine. This one here, um, as I said, is filled with uh, glycerin, um, which stops the needle from vibrating. The valve in, in here is constantly lifting and coming down again, lifting and coming down uh, really quite quickly under the effect of the, of the, of the, um, of the pump. So that the glycerin in here just smooths out those vibrations. Now, um, I've got an interesting question for you people out there now at this stage. Um, I'm probably going to get myself in all sorts of bother for raising this question. Um, we assume that this pressure shown here is the pressure of the oil as uh, fed to the crankshaft. We use the pressure on this gauge here to indicate the health of the crankshaft. Once the shells in the crankshaft get worn, the oil is able to and wriggle its way around the shells in the crankshaft uh, too easily. So the pressure falls. Now, this pressure here can't be the pressure 
uh, of the oil on the crankshaft because it's the wrong side of the valve. The valve is here on this side of the filter. So as I, as I described, once the, once the pressure in here reaches the set value by this spring here, say at 35 psi, the valve will lift and the pressure to the, the pressure on the oil to the crankshaft is actually relieved. It's relieved back into this um, low pressure circuit here. So certainly this pressure here is related to the pressure of the oil on the crankshaft. Um, but I'm not too sure that it's an actual reading. Uh, sometime whenever I get a minute, I'll, I'll rig up a circuit here and I'll actually put a pressure gauge on this circuit to actually see what's happening. So that's me and all sorts of bother now. Um, in order to help my thinking, uh, I've produced uh, a circuit diagram, uh, what I see has been the electrical equivalent of this, and perhaps people can take a look at that. So that's how I see the pressure distributed in the system. The red line represents the pressure delivered to the crankshaft, and that will be determined largely by the spring setting on the relief valve. Um, unless, of course, the crankshaft is very badly worn, whereupon it'll, it'll fall down below that. And the reading on the gauge will also fall down below that. The blue line represents a, a lower pressure throughout the rest of the system. The green line is the pressure of the oil in the sump, which is atmospheric. This is a purely electrical equivalent. Uh, you can see there that the maximum voltage is applied across that crankshaft resistor there and after that it's falling down through the diode. I hope that makes it a bit clearer, perhaps. So that's all I have for you on the oil distribution on the gardener. Um, I'll confess I've co concentrated my attention on the 6LXB, but all the gardeners are essentially the same. Uh, by the way, this is where we would fit a thermometer to measure the uh, oil temperature, or one place we can fit a thermometer. So, um, some of the more observant amongst you may have noticed that I'm chewing something in this video. Now, I do assure you it's not chewing gum. I would never do that. I'm actually sucking the stone from a damson plum. It's early in September here, and the damsons have just become ripe, and they're absolutely gorgeous. The stone is much better value for money than any chewing gum. Much cheaper and it lasts much longer. Thank you so much.